at Kipax Greenfield Primary School, this is how they define independent learning. We feel that if we are feeding them the information that they need to know um, on a constant basis, then they're not learning how to find out for themselves. And at the end of the day, it's not the content that's important, it's how they find it out for themselves. And once they've got those skills, they can find out any information that they need to know. The ethos of independence runs through the whole school. Pupils answer the phones at lunchtime. Good afternoon, Kipix Greenfields, can I help you? Okay. And Year 6 pupils run the ITC club without adult supervision. Um, today we're going to be learning a new topic about animals and um, plants and things like that. How, though, do the staff encourage independent learning in the classroom? So now we're going to think about um, what else we'd like to know. This programme will look in detail at how Deputy Head Kirsty Beresford teaches the topic of light and dark to her Year 1 pupils, using the principles of independent learning. I'd taught in various year groups uh, for numbers of years and was finding the curriculum stale. It was stale and the, the children thought it was stale and, and we felt it was to deliver it. So a new approach where the children were taking control of what, of what was happening. Uh, the fact that topics could be different every single year, um, I found quite exciting. The table who started their stories about can't you sleep little bear yesterday, I'd like you to carry on with those, cutting out your pictures and sticking them in the right order to tell the story. We're teaching in year one, the children, uh, is really their first real year in school where like they're down to, to sort of more structured activities in school. So to promote their independence, a lot of it to start with at the beginning of the year is just organising themselves, finding their own equipment in the classroom, um, finding out, asking them where they think they can find the answer to different questions um, and encouraging them to work on their own. So what we need to do first of all is to think about what we know already about light and dark and we'll write all those things down. What we did was start to brain shower the children at the beginning of the topic which meant that they all put their ideas down. You know last night I saw the moon. Did you? And that's one way place we can get light from isn't it? That was guiding your way last night was it while you were trick-or-treating? Excellent. Right, so we know where light comes from. So where does dark come from then? Jake? From the sky when it's, when it's, when it's bedtime. And then just as a twist, we asked them to write three good questions that they would like to know about that topic at the end of their brain shower. The staff put them together, so there were all the children's three good questions. And we found out the children wanted to know so many more exciting and relevant things than the national curriculum was asking us to teach them. Um, yesterday, um, um, when, 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 when it was our day at, at top, um, it stopped raining and we saw the rainbow. Did you? Excellent. Can we write that? Yeah, you can write. So, how are rainbows made? So, you do your question mark, Alfie. Yes, please. Yeah, that'd be super out. Little line and a dot. So basically, we had a child-led curriculum. The children were involved in planning things that they wanted to find out. What they wanted to find out was sometimes two or three years in advance of what we were expected to teach them. But because they want to know, they're achieving at those levels. Teachers are excited and stimulated, children are excited and stimulated. And so we're not saying to those children, I'm sorry, we don't teach you that till year three, spring term one, week 15, lesson three. Uh, we're saying you can have it now because you need to know. I tell you what, what I'll do is I'll give you a minute with your partner, OK? And I want you to think of one thing that's not very good about the dark on one thing that's not very good about the light, the sunshine, OK? You might bang your head when it's dark, you can't see. And if you fall over, if you bite a 
about stabilizers, you'll bang your head, but I can ride my bike about stabilizers now. The world is moving at such a quick pace that they need skills to be able to survive when they get out into, you know, into the big wide world. And I think if they are encouraged as a young person to want to learn and want to find out things for themselves, they've always got that inside them. Right, let's share some of the questions um, that we've thought of. Is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? Oh, wow. I love that question. Why does lightning come before thunder? Oh, that's a good question. Where does the sun disappear at night? How do fireworks explode? I'm looking forward to sorting that one out. <laughs> So as long as national curriculum is covered in a way that those learning objectives are met, Tell me again. everything else is up for grabs in the way that learning about the world should be. And well, how, um, um, how do um, lights work? They are very interesting questions, aren't they? I then take that away and spend possibly a day doing the, the planning. Planning is far quicker than it ever has been before um, because it, it's all coming from the children's ideas. So I can't actually do any planning at all uh, prior to the topic, so during my school holidays as I've, I've done in the past. Um, I have to wait until the children have generated the questions. Once those questions are generated, um, it probably takes maybe a whole day to plan an entire half term's worth of work. It is far more quicker than planning has been in the past. So what's your, what's your idea, Alfie? If, if we don't go to school in the morning and, and we keep in bed all morning, we miss school. Oh, would that be a bad thing? Excellent answer. <laughs> so far with independent learning, I've taught it for um, two, ter two full terms, and in that, which has been four topics. And in that time, I've never had to back up with any of my own activities. The children, what the children have come up with has actually been in excess of the time slot. I think Miss B can have a holiday for a term now. You know so much about the light and the dark, don't you? That, that is an awful lot before we even start. So what... As the topic moves along, the pupils create a circuit capable of lighting up a bulb. The work's racing ahead of what might normally be expected at this stage of year one. But that's because the pupils are asking to do it this way. This week, um, we are going to start answering some of the questions that we asked last week. But allowing pupils such control does present logistical problems for the staff. Short-term planning is a bit more difficult because it relies very much on what the pupils contribution for that day and what they want to learn and what you see individuals doing so for example children may not be grouped in the same groups at all for anything the teacher as they're going round, will see that these six particular children have got one area that they need teaching but could be put together there could be some children who were working individually, like a year one child wanting to make a chassis for a car, and I know that that's the DT lesson in year four, so the year one child will access the year four lesson. So basically it's very, very difficult. Sometimes it could be 30 individual lessons, and sometimes it can be groups, and sometimes it can be a class lesson. But what we're finding is that short-term planning is now done through discussion with pupils. And we're going to answer Beth's question this week and Beth wanted to know how the electric lights work in the ceiling. So we need to work out how the electricity gets into the lights, don't we now? And then we're going to do two activities, okay? The first activity is going to be, I'm going to give you some electricity and I want you to make a light bulb light up for me. But I'm not going to tell you how, I want you to work it out. You might not need all of them, Liam. I want you to work out which you do need and which you don't need to make your circuit. So I want you to make the bulb light up. My job is to teach them the skills that they need to be able to, to do that activity. Um, I do try as, as 
much as possible that the activity is not directed by me, so I'm not giving them the answer to the question. So if we clip that on there, there you go, it'll stay on. That's how the, that's how the light works up there in the, in the ceiling. Clever girl. It is time consuming, it's difficult to get your head round if you think, now for years we have been teaching or planning one lesson for 30 children with a bit of differentiation thrown in which has, you know, had its place. But now what I'm asking the staff to do is maybe on occasions, some, you know, have 30 different lessons. That seems very difficult. When I'm not asking for paperwork and I'm asking for them to plan through discussion with their pupils, that becomes much easier. This afternoon we're going to use our circuit that we made this morning and we're going to make it into a model of something that really does use a light or a flashing light in it, like a lighthouse, okay? Are we making a lighthouse? By putting that bit out and it's a little hole where you put the light in. How has the independent learning model changed the way Kirsty operates as a teacher? There are times of the day when I stand back and I'm not needed to facilitate their learning, they're, they're doing it themselves. In terms of time, time planning has been cut dramatically because you have time to go and sit and talk to children and spend time with children and find out, assess them individually even, to, about what they know. So first of all, let's think about what we know about the light. Brain shower your class, see what they know. You will be amazed at what they've been hiding away uh, or we have not allowed them to show us in the past. Um, and go with an open mind, let them take control um, of their learning. Uh, Harrison. Traffic lights. Wow. Very good. Enthusiastic children who are, who are willing to learn and want to find out is the biggest advantage. Um, Second to that is the fact that um, it raises standards, without a doubt. Um, a topic I've just done on light and dark, uh, the children's questions when I've um, related them to the national curriculum are actually answering questions for the national curriculum for year two and year five, and my children are in year one. Bearing in mind that our children are below national and local averages when they come into school, we're not now having children achieving their end of key stage two uh, levels, if you like, by the end of year three, year four and year five. So we're already getting children achieving level fours and fives in year three, four and five. And this is because the teacher isn't setting the ceiling and saying, I'm going to teach you what I need to teach you up to there. The children are setting the ceiling. They've got their own interests, their own values. And if that's a level four area that they, need, that they want to learn about in year one, then so be it. We did it like that. 